Okay, so what's going on, everybody? And um, well, first off, I have to say that um, this is not going to be a motorcycle video at all today. We've had some like amazing news because amazing news is kind of hard to come by right now, given the current situations. But um, we've had some amazing news in the camera industry. And if you've been following my channel for any or for a long period of time, I would say. Um, you would know I'm a camera nut. I have a, the A7 III, Canon EOS R. I have a G7X Mark One. I. I have the Sony RX100 Mark Seven. So um, I'm not shy to buying cameras. Um, before that, I had the A7R2. So yeah, I've been all over the place when it comes to camera. But these are exciting times when it comes to buying cameras right now. Uh, if you're in the market for a camera or looking to upgrade. This is like the perfect time. So let's jump into it. Sony has stolen uh, the market back from Canon, period. Um, now, if you don't know, Canon just uh, officially released the Canon R5, the Canon R6, and uh, they're pretty nice cameras. Now, I think the R5 is the one that shoots 8K. It comes with some very significant limitations when it comes to shooting 8K, which, in my opinion, is a... I think it was a little ahead of its time. I don't, uh, that's definitely the future, but it's not what's now, if that makes sense. 4K is still what's people, <clears throat> 4K is what people are still trying to get accustomed to actually using right now. So I definitely think Sony has, has made the right move, basically. Uh, now we obviously know, I think Panasonic is the first one to come out with the S8, was it S1H uh, that shoots 6K. Uh, that's a hell of a camera. It's a beast, but um, <laughs> it doesn't have autofocus, and that's the biggest thing, especially when it comes to creators and, and people that, that kind of align with me. Um, I, I shoot primarily by myself, or I'm shooting someone else, and it's basically me by myself. So autofocus is a huge deal. I want something that is reliable. So where do we end up? Well, you end up at the top, right? Sony and Canon neck and neck when it comes to autofocus so sony has done something very interesting they've put out the long-awaited a7s3 and it is um only 4k now i was scratching my head a little bit of why wouldn't you put out 6k and maybe it has something to do with overheating i'm not 100 percent sure don't quote me on that but um yeah but we got a 4k camera but it's probably the best 4K camera that uh, it's pretty much on the market right now, in my opinion. And then when we're talking about all around specs, everything, the, the whole camera as a whole, and, and we're talking about just 4K, it's probably by far the best camera strictly just for video. And, and I'm definitely including the autofocus in that because, again, they are one of the best besides Canon. Again, they're neck and neck when it comes to autofocus. But here, here's my problem. And here's why I've, I've already decided I'm not going to buy the Canon R5. It has nothing to do with the overheating issues, even though that is an issue. It has everything to do with, it has everything to do with the fact that if I'm going to buy a camera, I want to be able to take full advantage of all the features that it has, right? So as of right now, there is no possible way that I can edit 8K footage. It would simply be a waste of money to buy a 4K camera. Why not buy the best in the business uh, in my opinion, it's the Sony A7S III. Um, it finally has an articulating screen or flip-out screen. It's it, finally, right? After how many years? Over five years of people complaining about that, or maybe five years of complaining about that, they finally come out with a, a flip-out screen. So let's hope that's the future for Sony to where every single camera going forward will have that flip-out or articulating screen. So listen, I think people need to wake up and realize, like, the Canon R5 is a great, great camera on, on paper. And it will be great for a, a decent amount of professionals or pro, pro, pro consumers, right? Um, for the average Joe, it's definitely not going to be a camera that, in my opinion, will be something that I'm looking at right now. Why? Because, one, like I just said, I can't edit 8K footage. I probably could barely even look at that. I don't own any 8K monitors. I don't own anything of the nature to be able to even start to even begin to, one, store that memory, two, edit that footage. So it makes no sense. 
why not 4K? I, and again, I'm I'm still trying to wrap my head around that point. Why didn't Canon just try to perfect 4K? Why try to shoot for 8K? Maybe because of Panasonic with the 6K? Uh, could be, but I think Panasonic did a pretty good job with that 6K camera. It did address some of the overheating issues that could potentially happen in 6K. I mean, obviously they have a fan in it, right? So, yes, the only downfall for Panasonic, though, is the autofocus, and that's not coming from a pro consumer. That's coming from a regular average Joe consumer like myself that relies heavily on autofocus. Now, listen, if autofocus wasn't the big deal, as of right now, I would say the Panasonic S1H is by far the best camera, right? Even for 4K, it's the best camera. But, again, it's the autofocus. It's not reliable. So, guys, uh, hands down, I think Sony has taken the market back from Canon. I think Canon was definitely going to run away with the market, with the R5 and R6, even if people didn't want to deal with the R5 and the overheating issues with the um, 8K, I think the R6 would have done pretty well. And I think it still would do pretty well. I think the R6 will probably outsell the R5 uh, and the R5 being the 8K camera just because it's a little bit more realistic. It's $2,500 versus thirty what $3,500, $3,800. I can't remember exactly how the price is on the top, off the top of my head. But um, there, 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 there's a big gap. There's a, over a thousand dollar gap between the R5 and R6, and rightfully so, you're getting 8K uh, for whatever the limited amount of time you can shoot. And you know, I was watching Sarah Dietschy and Jared Undone talk about the R5, right, and the overheating issues, and people comparing it to a cinema camera. And he said it so great. Well, the difference between a cinema camera that shoots 8K with the same recording limits is the fact that they have fans, the fact that that cinema camera can still function and still be turned or still left on to reframe a shot. As for the Canon, on the other hand, it completely shuts down. You can't use it for 30 plus minutes in most cases. And then the recording limit gets even smaller. So like that's the thing. 8K is just not realistic. If they haven't perfected it in the cinema world, why would we think in the consumer world it would be a good idea to create an 8k camera that we already know in the cinema world has limitations on how long they can record because it's not even a perfected technology in the cinema world yet it's like in my opinion it's still new like 4k has been around for ages now like 4k is the standard 4k is what most people in most households will be viewing things in right the, obviously there are 8k tvs but 4K, it's basically the standard we're all getting accustomed to. One, watching things in 4K. Two, editing things in 4K. Like, literally, my old five-year-old iMac can barely edit 4K footage. So what did I do? I went out and bought a laptop that could actually edit 4K footage. I ended up buying the Dell XPS 15 75 90, and I will buy a 4K monitor here in the next few days. Uh, because my iMac is just getting too slow to edit 4K footage now. Um, so, like, I have been preparing to push towards 4K, not not 6K, not 8K. So, for me, it just doesn't make sense why I would buy an 8K camera. And a lot of you, it's going to be the same way. It's not going to make sense for you to buy an 8K camera. It's probably going to make more sense to buy a 4K camera because it's still going to fit into your workflow. Um, and like I said, I think Sony A7S III is the best camera right now for the price for the price i think it's the best camera the period best autofocus now for the a7s3 it finally has the articulating screen or flip out screen for us people that record ourselves so it it, it really has everything that you need and 8k is just too soon but again there are going to be some people that just has to have the 8k and then you're going to be using that camera at 4K about 99% of the time. And you know what? You know who I think the 8K camera would be good for? It, In my opinion, it would be for people that, let's say, do product shots. Can be alone with the product, controlled environment. It, the recording limitations on 8K is not that big of a deal because you have all the time you need with that particular product. Yes, you might have a deadline, but you can being that it's a one-man band half the time or a two-man band when it comes to product shots and things like that and product videos, um, 
that's where I can see the R5 being like very successful for those people that want to shoot an 8K, understand the limitations of the 8K for the um, R5, uh, but have a very, very co controlled environment to where they don't have to get the shot all in one at one setting or, you know, maybe having to wait 30 minutes just for it to cool down. is not that big of a deal because I can actually pick right up where, where I left off if I'm shooting an inanimate object or maybe an object object that I need to, that that I need to move. Um, and it's just me and one other person. It's not that big of a deal. But when it comes to shooting a person and you're paying for their time, I just don't think the R5 <laughs> makes a lot of sense. And, and a lot of people have already like answered that question and, and made it obvious. It's not realistic and practical to be using in actually the filmmaking settings as far as sh on location shooting a particular person. But guys, that's just my two cents. I think the R5 is unrealistic at this point because one, most of us can't edit 8K footage and we're going to be using it for 4K. So why not get a camera that does 4K the best and, and have, has no issues with overheating. Like that's the big thing. Why not try to get the R6, especially if we're using for YouTube right now? I'm, I'm debating me personally. I'm debating between the R6 because of the price. No, is it doesn't have the best 4k compared to the Sony a7S III? No, it doesn't. But that price is so enticing that you have to think about it. Like, I can just get, I can get away with using that camera. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Is it the high, it's not as high quality. It's not going to give me a bit rate of 600 megabits per second. Um, but it's going to be, what, 200 to 300, if I'm not mistaken, which is more than enough for YouTube and the things that I do would be more than enough if you had some local client stuff um, that will be showing on, let's say, a commercial on the small screen because, I, listen, these cameras are fitted and, and, and designed to basically fit for TV. That's basically what they're built for. They're not cinema cameras. Now, that Canon R5, it's getting closer to that cinema-like quality, but it still has some work to do. It has to address the overheating issues. If they can overdress that overheating issue in the next generation or before it comes out, my God, I might change my mind. I definitely would change my mind, but it would cost me in the long run because I would have to revamp my whole computer system just to be able to edit in 8K. But guys, that's my two cents. Motorcycle content coming soon. I, I, I definitely like using this whole setup right here. And um, well, what I'm going to do is probably have some sit down videos where I'm talking into the Roadcaster Pro and obviously still riding the motorcycle. If you don't know, cameras are my first love. Uh, they will always be my first love. But motorcycles are slowly creeping up into that realm of uh, passion that I, I have now. But guys... I'm buying, as of right now, I'm buying the A7S III. But I'm still thinking long and hard about that, the R6, just because of the price. And you're still getting a hell of a camera for that price. You're still getting 10-bit. You're still getting 422 in all modes. You're still getting a brand new sensor, brand new battery. You're getting a lot of stuff with that R6. And it still has a really great quality 4K no, virtually no crop. I think it's a 1.07 crop, which virtually means no crop. There's a small crop, but I'm almost positive to Sony in some modes will probably have a crop, especially if you're using like the intelligent active stability, the, um, what is it? The electronic stability, it, it crops in. So that's something you have to account for too, because we are, we know IBIS in Sony sucks. So you would particularly be using that electronic stabilization along with the internal uh, internal stabilization so uh, you know like I say I mean it's really what fits in your budget and what works for your workflow um, any 4k camera I have right now would fit in my workflow any 4k in the any 4k camera in the future would fit in my workflow because I have a computer that is more than capable of editing rendering and uploading footage in 4k so keep that in mind 8K may not be what we need right now. It's definitely not what I need right now. Uh, it, it's just a conversation you have to have with yourself as far as saying, do can I use 8K right now? Can I edit 8K? Can I afford a CFast Express card? That's the things that you have to ask yourself because 
you have to understand the price of the camera is not the only cost you have, right? There's lenses, there's with these new, especially if you want to use 8K in the R5, you have to buy a CF Express card. And those things are not cheap. And and then and then we're talking about thousands of megabyte megabits per second. Uh, and I know it's eight, what is it, four to one, eight to one when it comes to megabytes, but it's a lot of information to try to store. So you're gonna need a high capacity CF Express card, and those things are not cheap. They're not cheap at all. So that's like another cost on top of trying to figure out if your computer can even handle editing 8K smoothly. But anyways, guys, Sony's done it again. I'm super excited. I'll check you guys in the next video. We're probably going to be doing, uh, I, I think what I'm going to do is do camera stuff with motorcycle stuff. Because again, like I said, camera stuff is a passion of mine. Motorcycle stuff is a brand new passion of mine and they kind of go together in a sense in, in a sense because you have to film yourself on a motorcycle obviously we know we're using gopros and uh, insta 360s and all those things but there's still cameras at the end of the day right so i think what i'm going to do is incorporate cameras motorcycles we're going to talk about those things it may be separately maybe together not 100 percent sure but I'm going to stop rambling. I'll check you guys in the next video. 